So for those of you who are not from Chicagoland, you did not grow up with the same stories I did. Uh, but ever since I was a kid, and a lot of the kids in this area, uh, we've always heard about Hell's Gate. Uh, and, and being that I run haunted houses in Chicago, they would, the customers would always be coming up to me in front of Statesville saying, is this the haunted house with the slide? Is this the haunted house hidden in the woods? Is this the haunted house you can get your money back? Uh, and for years, I just tell them, no, of course not. That was, that was Hell's Gate. That was like from when I was a child. Uh, that got closed down like in the 80s or something a long time ago, before the internet, if you can believe in such a thing out there, America, before the internet. Uh, so there was this haunted house, a, a small time operation uh, that uh, was out in the woods in an old abandoned house called Hell's Gate. Uh, so it was one that started all of those legends of the slide and the money back. It had all those things. It also was before, you know, lawyers. Uh, so, you know, they could do a lot of weird stuff back in the old Hell's Gate. Uh, but one of the ghost stories that followed it was that some of their actors went missing one night. And then shortly after that, the whole haunted house shut down. Uh, so that's kind of like the legend that's been living in the Chicagoland area for, you know, 30 plus years here. Uh, so what we did as Zombie Army is we brought back the legend. We brought back the thing uh, that I believe has given rise to all the haunted houses in Chicagoland. Uh, and for us, it's, it's because we're haunted house fans. So we wanted to bring back that one haunted house. Uh, and of course it's different, you know, of course. I mean, there was no building when we got here. There was no nothing anymore. That was 30 years ago. Uh, so what we did is on the old bones of that location, we built the facility. Uh, when we say it's an adventure, we mean it. We want our audience to feel like they're on an adventure. So you're not even allowed to drive back here uh, because well, we're, it's hidden in the middle of the woods. So we make all of our customers park at the Metro lot. Then you gotta take a bus a mile and a half down Murder Road. And yes, that's its name, Murder Road. You'll, you'll figure out exactly why we call it that way once you're driving down that at night. You then get dropped off in a vacant lot. It won't be so vacant because we do have customers. Uh, you get your ticket. Uh, and then you're instructed to go into the forest. So now you have to physically go through the forest at night. Uh, and yes, I've loaded it with tons of scares, physical challenges, and actors hunting you at every turn. After you get through the forest, you then have to go around the cemetery, which guess what? The cemetery is full of zombies because, well, it's a cemetery. Uh, after you get through that cemetery, you then have to go up the hill to face the house. Once you get to the house, and now like I said, you had to take the bus, go down the forest trail, go across the cemetery to get to the front door of the house, and that's when Hell's Gate starts. So now you have to go through room after room after room, going through one secret passage after another, until you get to the attic, find the slide, ride it to the basement, and try to get out of Hell's Gate. That's what we got here. We got 150 actors. We've got a full adventure that takes you over 45 minutes. Uh, we don't use any blood. Uh, we have the darkness here, which is uh, how the demons transfer themselves into other hosts. So you'll see the blackness, the darkness everywhere. Uh, and we have a, an amazing makeup team. We've got over six makeup artists up there, killing it all night long. A kick-ass costume team, making sure people are not just in costumes, but they're in vintage costumes, 1920s, 1930s. When I say we load it up on antiques, we load it up. And it's because I want you to feel that life experience when you're here. Friday the 13th with 
us. Yeah. We're gonna give him one hell of a show. Also, it doesn't end there. We have Haunted House Chicago coming to review us tonight. These people go to over 50 haunted houses around Chicago. They review them. They are the very top of all reviews. Tonight, they come to write their review for us. Now, a lot of times people will go right into, okay, we're going to give them such a better show, or we're going to add things to our show, or we're going to pull out all the stops. You go to hell if you made it to the third week and you haven't pulled out all the stops. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no way we're giving anybody more than what we give every single one of our customers. That is our full amount of energy, our full love to this show. And trust me, guys, it's Friday the 13th. They're going to be dumber and drunker coming through here tonight and ever. <laughs> so if you ain't giving it your full attention and your full energy and your full passion, you ain't going to make it through tonight. You're going to get rolled right out the door. That's how it works. You get to this part of the season, and it comes faster and stronger. And either you're faster and stronger than they are, or you're not. Uh, do you guys have any worries? Oh! Yes, hell no! Hell no! This right now is one of the best haunted houses I've seen on the planet. Ah! So all I ask of you tonight is to give the same show you give day after day, minute after minute. That's a zombie army show. We never back down no matter who they are. Even if they're beautiful, important people from around the country. Yay! But tonight, we give everything to this show, to this group of audience. Are you ready for that? Yeah! It's Friday the 13th. Are you ready for it? Yeah! Are you tired? Yeah! Is there anywhere else you want to be? Yeah! In the past 20 years of producing Statesville Haunted Prison, we have learned a lot. Uh, and Statesville is not the only show we produce. You know, we do not own Statesville Haunted Prison. Uh, we own the production, uh, the Zombie Army production that is there. And we've been producing it for 20 years, just like we produce the shows at Navy Pier, just like we produce the shows at Dragon's Dome. Uh, we've produced a lot of shows. Uh, and, and it's my feeling, it's my... I guess educational theory uh, in this haunt world and really in all industry is that the key to moving forward is understanding your mistakes. The key to success is not just accepting those failures, but celebrate them. Uh, bring them to the very front of your meetings and, and, and work on those failures. Embrace those failures uh, because I learn so much more when I fail than I ever do when I just succeed. When everything is going great, you're not really learning anything. Uh, but it's each one of those failures is an opportunity to learn, to grow, to get better. Uh, and I would say that across the board, Hell's Gate is the culmination of 20 years of learning, uh, of mistakes, of failures, of, of rocky roads, of, of missteps, of, of, of the things that we all do uh, throughout our lives. Uh, but Zombie Army, man, we grab onto those mistakes. We own those mistakes. I mean, so much so uh, that you can see our, our production videos for this year, the promo videos for this year's Haunted House was literally addressing the reviews from last year at Hell's Gate. Literally reading what the audience says about your show and fixing it. Uh, that's what we love to do. We love producing great haunted houses. Uh, so you learn from those mistakes. So yes, when you look at Hell's Gate behind me here, this is, to my knowledge, the only haunted house facility designed by haunters for haunters, which means everything you see here, the ground, the hill, the rocks, the gates, the building itself, its location, the septic fields, the toilets, where the electricity comes in, all of that was designed by people that live and breathe inside of haunted houses. We built this entire operation to be for people that do haunted houses for a living. Uh, so yeah, you see, amazing hallways that, that basically maximize your efficiency across the board. Uh, that also helps us with flow uh, when you're moving people through because if you're not moving people through at a good click, you're not making any money. Uh, all of our room designs are designed for those actors to empower those actors and to let those actors get in and out of their room safely. You'll see that throughout the show. Uh, and when it comes to the audience, you know, they're coming in this space 
and they're, they're walking into a 1920s mansion with hard oak floors throughout, uh, vintage antiques in every single room. Uh, so what we've done here is we've taken everything we learned in 20 years, and what we learned is that the audience, they want to feel like they're going through a life experience. Uh, so that's why we say Hell's Gate. It's not just a haunted house, it's an adventure, because we're making you take that adventure. We go, we go, we go in the house now, come on. Yeah, you okay, come on. first announced that we were bringing back Hell's Gate Haunted House, you know, the haunted house from the 80s, and that Zombie Army was going to bring back this haunted house about 15 minutes away from Statesville Haunted Prison. Yeah, people thought that was crazy. Of course they did. Uh, but I also don't think they understood our demographics, uh, what our audience wanted, 
and what we believed uh, was needed in the industry at large. Uh, and it was our feeling that as long as Statesville remains the rock show that Zombie Army does, and, and that show is not affected, and we create a completely different haunted house experience out here at Hell's Gate, we did not see them as you know, self-cannibalizing issues. We did not see one haunted house feeding off of the other because they were two completely different shows. Uh, that was the theory, yeah, of course. Uh, not all theories you know, uh, work out, uh, but uh, we had last year to prove it. In our opening year, uh, Statesville had incredible numbers, even when the Cubs won the World Series. Even while Hell's Gate, a mega haunted house, opened 15 minutes away, Statesville's ticket sales were fantastic and Hell's Gate ticket sales were ridiculous. I mean, we did almost 29,000 people in our first 16 days of operation. So when people ask me, uh, isn't it going to destroy the other? I just say, look at the numbers, man. Math is math. Understand your industry. Understand what the audience actually wants. And they want two completely different shows. So they go to both. It's pretty easy. What's taking you so long? Did you say it tonight? Come this way, please. I'll give someone advice as to what to bring uh, in terms of acting to a, a haunt of this caliber would be um, uh, embrace yourself with the the overall um, theme because uh, a lot of what I do is uh, creating some anticipation for what's gonna come later on um, other characters other rooms uh, the overall theme here is the darkness so I'll occasionally whisper um, a little tidbits of what's what's to come 
um, the ominence of the darkness, the ominence of the inhabitants in the house. So uh, just just surround yourself, or just immerse yourself in in and the the storyline, and uh, that'll go a long way. Well, the my approach on the character that I use for this haunt is based on the storyline of the haunt itself. Uh, my name is Julius, uh, the the um, charlatan. Uh, I'm trying to lure people in to feed to the darkness, to feed to the captain, in uh, hopes to raise my own ranking within within the haunt. So, taking from the story is my approach. In uh, uh, Statesville, I just you know, I'm a prisoner. Yeah, so whatever sick, twisted thoughts are in my head is, is what I just uh, displayed when I when I when I did haunt, haunt there or did work at that haunt. So. Some of the tools that we uh, learn here through John's training is uh, you know, your body movement. To, to be very keen on um, using your body as a tool, not just your words, your posture, you know, your uh, any features that you have that might be viewed as just intimidating like you know my beard sometimes I'll get in, in another guy's face who has a beard and, and it, 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 it makes them uncomfortable because I'm getting in their space um, but uh, people have different characteristics that they could definitely capitalize on to, uh, to, to get a scare but there is a lot of thought put into character development um, so there's a storyline that, that you have in the back of your head replaying and you just throughout the season you're you're fine-tuning it and you are building uh, your own story within that within those confines of the, uh, the character did you bring enough for the entire group <laughs> I'll make it rain with the motherfucking holes. <laughs> <laughs> you can edit that out. <laughs>